Hi, what's up, everyone? It's Yang here again. So the most questions I get from my clients about mixing is how to properly send stems. I'm sure many of you have similar experience when you and your engineers going back and forth about the stems. When you thought that you have sent、um, the proper stems, but then your engineers going back to you and say, "I need more," or "I need something else." So I decided to make a quick YouTube video to explain to you what to send and how to properly prepare your stems for your mixing engineers. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. This video contains two major sections. First is the general section where I will cover the universal concept of preparing stems for mixing. The second part of the video, I will go over simple steps to export stems in Logic and Ableton, two of the most used DAW for music producers and artists out there. If you want me to do a quick walkthrough on the other DAW, please let me know in the comment section below. Timeline of this video is in the description box. First. Let's talk about the term stems. Technically, the individual separated audio tracks you send to your mixer is called multi-tracks, like kick, snare, hi-hat tracks, instead of one stereo drum track with everything mixed in. And stem tracks are usually stereo tracks with groups of instruments or vocals. Although there is a difference between the term stems and multi-track. Most people are used to the idea of calling multi-track as stems. So in this video, we will use the term stems for both stems and multi-tracks. This is probably the most asked questions. My answer is to send tracks with EQ, compression, effects all baked in if they are part of the sound design, with reverb and delay tracks sent separately. Here's the reason why. When you spend countless hours crafting the sound for your song, you want to hand over to the mixing engineer exactly where you left off, and they can help you elevate your sound from there. If they have to spend hours to recreate what you have built, it's less possible to get a mix that matches your vision. Of course, with extremely experienced engineers, get the idea and they can get it right quickly. Well, for more consistent results. I recommend everyone to send your engineer exactly what you're happy about, and let them do their magic. And they will also thank you for saving their time and energy to perform more creative touches. That being said, the easiest and the most effective way is to send your mixer your session file. If you're working in the same DAW, I mix in Pro Tools, Ableton, and Studio One. So I advise my clients to send me their session file with all of the tracks frozen, so I don't have to worry about the missing plugins. For those who can only send out audio stems, I will also go over how to properly export stems in Logic and Ableton. Let's talk about technical requirements for your stems. First of all, always send audio in highest resolution of WAV file that matches your session settings. If you work in 24-bit rate and 48k hertz, for instance, send all of your audio file in 2448. Two, always include your automation and panning information. Three, finish editing and tuning before handing the projects to your mixers. Watch out for any room noise and breaths before you put any audio effects or processing on. You want to turn up your monitoring or your headphone volume to check. In my other tutorials, I will share with you how to eliminate noise to get a better recording, and how to denoise in post production. Remember to check it out. Links are in the description box down below. All the editing and tuning should be done before the mixing stage. You should always take care of the timing and pitch. At recording or editing stage, sit down with your recording engineer or producers to get it right. Don't expect your mixer will fix all of those issues for you. If you don't know anyone who can help you with editing, please consult with the mixer. 
They usually provide separate service or point you to someone who they know can provide the service. Some of the mixer, like myself, will also nudge the timing or pitch a tiny little bit to fit in the pockets and groove of the song, of course, if it's needed. Lastly, always import all of the stems in new session and give it a listen before sending out. You want to make sure what you export it matches your reference mix. No missing pieces, distortion or sudden cut off, etc. Trust me, this 5-minute move can save you hours of communication cost with your engineers. Remember, the better quality of the stems you hand to the mixers, the better result you will get. Mixers always want the projects they work on to be the most spectacular piece. Give them a chance to turn your projects into something bigger than life. Okay, if you are a Logic user, continue watching it for a detailed demonstration of exporting proper stems. If you are an Ableton user like myself, please skip ahead to the next section. Timestamps are in the description below. Before bouncing the stems, we want to check overall level at the loudest section of the song to make sure nothing is clipping. If you see the red here at the meter, feel free to select all of the tracks and bring down the volume a tiny bit until the meter is not at red so that you're leaving enough headroom for your mixers. Then we select the full length of the song from the start to the end and make it a cycle selection. You can hit the shortcut C to toggle on and off the cycle selection. Next, we hit the shortcut X to bring up the mix window. We find all of the aux send tracks for reverb and delay at the very end of the channel strips. Select them, go to Option menu, and select Create Tracks for selected channel strips. Now you can see in the main window, aux send tracks show up as tracks. Now highlight all of the tracks from the main window and go to the menu, under File, Export, export 47 tracks we selected as audio files, or hit Command E. Let's create a stem folder first. Remember where you save the folder, name it as song title underscore for mix stem. Under Range, we will select Export Cycle Range Only. Bit depth should be the same as your session settings. If you have enough space, you can select 32-bit float provides the highest dynamic range. For multi-output software instruments, your battery drum rack, for instance, you can have them export separately and as a one stereo file. Here, I will stick with one file per track. Remember to select Include Volume Pan Automation and turn off the normalize option. Otherwise, it will mess up the volume balance between your tracks. A little trick for organizing your stems is to put a track number before your track name, just like the name shown here. That way, when your mixer import the stems in their workstation, everything is in perfect order and they don't have to spend a lot of time trying to navigate. And as a result, you will get your mix back sooner. Now, after we exported the stems, we will save the current session as a stem session so that it doesn't mess up with your original session. Close the session and create a blank new session. Import all of the stems we just exported. Play the song all the way through and make sure it sounds right. No distortion or clipping, no missing sound or effects, no missing sections. After this, we are ready to send off the stem folder to your mixer. I'm putting the BPM and key information in the folder name. Nice and neat. Now, I'm going to compress the folder to a smaller size and send it. Voila! Before bouncing the stems, we want to check overall level at the loudest section of the song to make sure nothing is clipping. If you see the red here at the meter, feel free to select all of the tracks and bring down the volume a tiny bit until the meter is not at red, so that you're leaving enough headroom for your mixers. Then we select the full length of the song 
from the start to the end and make it a loop selection. Highlight it. Then go to File menu, Export Audio slash Video. Choose all individual tracks. Make sure the start and length is correct. Turn on Include, Return and Master Effects. Make sure Normalize is off. Choose the same sample rate and bit depth as your session setting. Turn on PCM, Wave File Type, and No Thither. Create a new folder for mix stamps. Properly name it. I will include BPM and key info in the folder name and delete the song title from this section because I don't like the stem name has a long song title name in the front. I'm not able to quickly review the actual name of the track after I import them into my mix session. So I will just put a space here. Now we're ready to export. I haven't quite figured out how to add the number of the tracks back in after I renamed the track in the session. So if you have the answer, please let me know in the comment section. Now we have exported the stems. We will save the session as a new version. Name it for mix stem. Then I'm going to create a new Ableton session and import all of the stems in the new session and give it a listen. Hold on command key while dragging them in. That way, all of the file will be put into its individual track. Let's play all the way through and make sure it sounds right. No distortion or clipping, no missing sound or effects, no missing sections. After this, we're ready to compress the stem folder and send it off to your favorite mixer. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like the content that I'm sharing, um, please hit the little like button down below. It will help me a tons. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channels, remember to uh, subscribe it and hit the little bell button down below. If you are fellow engineers and you found this content useful, um, feel free to share this with your clients so that they know what to properly prepare for you. And um, you can also save a ton of times. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, um, also leave a little comment down below for me. I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Until next time, bye for now.